Here in the Northern Hemisphere, we're all getting back up to speed after a long winter. We're also getting our bikes back up to speed, which means many of you have just spent all your money. So today, I'll be reviewing some products that only cost two figures. In fact, the most expensive one falls short of $60. First, the Klug, which I've seen for as low as $15. It's a mountain bike stand that you can put high up on the wall to mount your bike vertically, or low down just to stand it up. Installing the Klug is pretty simple. You just screw in this outer shell and then pop the inner piece inside of it. I was really excited to mount a Klug to the lower part of my workbench for making cockpit repairs at ground level. You need to be forceful to get a knobby 2.5 into the Klug but it'll work all the way down to a 2.0. I like it and I think the price is fair considering how functional and low profile it is. Next up, a compact chainsaw. Not like a chainsaw, a chainsaw. It's basically an open-ended chainsaw blade with nylon straps on the ends. With a neat little carrying case you can either throw in your bag or strap to your belt. It works like this. Like any handsaw, it can be a workout, but for its size, it can't be beat. You can find pocket chainsaws like these for as little as $10, but sometimes you get crappy handles or low quality blades. So far, this one has been well worth $22, for clearing trails or camping. I think it's a good low-tech solution that barely weighs anything. Yeah, at that point you can just finish it off. The next product is called Hiplock, which is a reusable zip tie sold for $18 per pair. These were given to me at Sea Otter by Hiplock's rep, and I'm not totally clear on what their application is for bicycles. This one has a key, and this one uses a combination. While they probably are great as reusable zip ties, they aren't so secure. With any tool, you can break a hip lock quickly and with very little effort. In fact, we were able to break one with a cheap pair of scissors. I wouldn't lock up a helmet with this, let alone a bike. If your helmet has this on it, but someone else's helmet doesn't, they'll steal someone else's. Professional thieves, they'll always have something like this in their backpack, always. At least. This is the minimum. But if you need a cleverly designed reusable zip tie for something other than security, Hiplock exists and it does what it promises. Next, we'll take a look at some cageless water bottles, which promise lower profiles and better retention than typical bottle cages. The Fidlock costs $35, features a twist release and a magnetic latch. This bottle from Fabric costs $11 and just hooks onto these little nubs. Both come with everything you need for mounting. I'll be testing these today on the underside of my down tube. So it's safe to say that if they survive here, They'll fare even better on the inside of a down tube. Let's start with the Fidlock. The cage features a latch and two magnets. Just hold the bottle close to it and it snaps into place. The only way to get it back off is by deliberately twisting the bottle. Pretty innovative. The mount does hold the bottle away from your frame a bit, but no more than a cage would. Let's see how secure it is. The Fidlock held up in my tests, and even took some damage during a crash. Did my water bottle stay in? Holy, I can't believe that just, what? The Fidlock does wobble a bit, but I saw no evidence of it coming loose, even while plowing through rock gardens and hucking ledges. Onto the fabric bottle, which mounts using these little plastic nubs. You just slide the bottle over them and the pressure keeps it in place. Without a complex latch, it holds much closer to the frame than the Fidlock. The bottle itself, if I'm being honest, is pretty ugly, but it only costs $11. Let's see how it fares. You know what? I think it wobbles less than the Fidlock, 
In fact, it held up just as well in all my tests. But this was a brand new bottle with freshly installed nubs. I suspect that these will wear out with repeated use and grow less effective at retaining the bottle. Fidlock, on the other hand, uses a mechanical latch, which should perform more or less the same over time. But at three times the price, you're definitely paying for this feature. Personally, I'll be using the Fidlock, since the mechanical retention mechanism gives me more confidence, and the design is more refined overall. With that said, I really like both of these. They offer better retention, a cage that's practically invisible when not in use, weight savings, and in the case of the fabric bottle, cost savings. If you ride with a bottle, using either of these seems like a great option. Next, Tubo Lido. This is a $30 inner tube, folks. Now, I personally run tubeless tires and only use inner tubes for emergencies. For that reason, I carry one of my frame at all times. Not that I'm a weight weenie, but this thing is hefty. While the Tubo Lido is a third the size and weight, to me, this is the practical application, cutting down on your cargo. In fact, its size opens up a whole slew of new mounting options that weren't possible before. Time to see what this thing is all about. It turns out the Tubo Lido isn't stretchy like a normal tube. Without a tire holding its shape, it sort of pops out like a balloon animal. So if you use your Tubo Lido for an emergency repair, it probably won't go back to its original size and shape afterwards. Still, I'm always refining my no backpack setup and will be carrying a Tubo Lido with me from now on. Speaking of strapping crap to your bike, you can get these one-up EDC straps for $15 per pair. While you could use some electrical tape, self-stick straps, or any number of things, these are a little neater and a lot more secure than anything else out there. Just pull back on the strap as hard as you want, and this little nub will hold it in place. At $15, it's pretty expensive for a strap, but you get two of them and they are remarkably robust. Now for a tool I think more of us should own, Masterlink pliers. These are made by Park Tool and I have two pairs of them, one on my bench and one on my car. Not only can they effortlessly release a Masterlink, but they can also snap one back together. At $15, bucks, they are right in line with what you'd expect a good specialty tool to cost. And if you wrench on your own bike, they'll save you some hassle. This is the Topeak Ninja Mountain, which is a water bottle cage featuring an integrated tool. In another video, I reviewed the road version of this, which came with a pretty bare bones tool, not this one. The mountain version comes with an extremely capable multi-tool, built into a clever little compartment on the back of the bottle cage. The whole thing costs about $50, and I think it's cool, but I'm not crazy about the cage, which didn't stack up well against other cages in my tests. In fact, I'd rather just review this surprisingly good tool, which is the Topeak Mini 20. It has every hex size you could want, including a rare 10 mil. When would you even need that? It has a tire lever, a bottle opener, chain tool, spoke wrenches. Hell, it even has a piece of wire for holding your chain in place while working on it. To top it off, it's seriously slim and has just enough leverage to get the job done. My only complaint about the Mini 20 is that it's hard to flip the bits out so you need to remove the chain tool in order to push from the other side. Maybe it'll loosen up over time. It's also $35, which is on the upper end of compact multi-tools, but for all its capability, I think it's a fair ask. Another product from Topeak is the Smart Gauge, which is simply a digital pressure gauge. All floor pumps have built-in gauges, so most of us don't have a need for this. But sometimes it's nice to just check your pressure before a ride and make sure your bike is on point. The Smart Gauge has a rotating head so you can easily see the screen, and it even has a bleed valve to let air out as you're checking it. At $25, you can almost buy a floor pump for the cost of this, but I have several friends who swear by it. My only complaint about the Smart Gauge is that the pressure doesn't update in real time when pressing the bleed valve. Other than that, I really like it. The next product is called a mic cover, which is a little furry thing you can put over your camera mic to reduce wind noise. They come in packs which include these adhesive pads. You position the mic hole in the little donut area, and then install the dead cat thingy over it. Here's what my GoPro sounds like without the mic cover installed. Listen, and you can hear the wind rushing over the mic.
Now let's try with the mic cover. These things work amazing, which is why we pay 20 freaking dollars for a pack of them. It seems like a ripoff for some little fuzzy things, but I haven't personally found a more elegant solution than the mic cover. So there you have it, a bunch of mountain bike products under $60. Even if you don't have $60 to spend, you can still ride your bike without reusable zip ties and crazy lightweight inner tubes. Thanks for riding with me today and I'll see you next time.